All right, what we're going to be talking about is actually an update on a previous uh, uh, presentation, coping with big data image formats, integration of CBF, Nexus, and HDF5. And that's interesting. But what's more interesting is the author list. Okay? This is me, of course. Now, here's Jonathan Sloan, Graham Winter, and Tobias Richter, coming to me from Diamond and, and, and Isis, okay? Two other authors, Nyack and Comsys. Nyack is the Nexus International Advisory Committee. Comsys is the Committee on the Maintenance of the CIF Standard of the IUCR. Okay? And they very kindly agreed to have their names put as authors on this, not saying that, yeah, this is the official policy, okay? This is what we're working on. This is something we're trying to come to a conclusion on. Okay. Oh, dear. Silly machine. Let's go back. Okay. Now, back one. I'm going to use the bad word, big data. I apologize. All right. The big data demands of a new generation of X-ray pixel array detectors necessitate, not suggest, they necessitate, the use of new storage technologies as we meet the limitations of existing file systems. We are breaking the hardware and software we have. We've got to change something. And it really is big data. The image you may have of crystallographic data from a few years ago as being sort of moderate is breaking down. It's no longer true. Okay. Uh, the modular nature of the new detectors provides the possibility of more complex detector arrays, which in turn requires a complex description of the detector geometry. As messy as you may think the metadata you have to deal with now is, it's going to get worse. You're going to have to deal with more. Okay. Taken together, these give an opportunity to combine the best of CBF image zip, that's the crystallographic binary file, Nexus, that's a common data format you've just been hearing about, heavily used for neutron, x-ray, and muon science, and HDF5, the hierarchical data format, version 5, for the management of that data at synchrotrons. Okay. Whether this will happen at, you know, in other environments, I'll, I'll Count my blessings if we can just do synchrotrons for the moment. Discussions are in progress between Comsifs, as I told you, and NIAC on an integrated ontology dictionary. Onto uh, some people will shoot me for this. An ontology is a fancy word for a dictionary. Okay? Okay. A proof of concept API based on CBF Live and the HDF5 API is being developed in a collaboration among Dowling College, Brookhaven National Lab, and Diamond Light Source. A preliminary mapping and a combined API are under development. Okay. Here we go again. The new generation of high performance X ray detectors requires the integration of HDF5, Nexus, and CBF. You really have to get this into you. This, this is a freight train coming at us. Big things are happening. They're good things scientifically. They're wonderful things. But to deal with it, we've got to change. The Dectris workshop in Baden, Switzerland in January 2013 established the parameters of the integration. This is something some of us have been working on for two decades. We just got an agreement. This is, you know, this is like watching paint dry. Okay. A collaboration has been working on specifications in code. Okay. So the API, CBF Live 09.2.12. Yes, there are lots of versions of this because we do things and it changes. Okay. Can store arbitrary CBF files in HDF5 and recover them. Supports the use of all CBF Live compression in HDF5 files. And that's actually important. Provides mini CBF to Nexus to convert sets of mini CBF files to a sing single Nexus file. This is something Jonathan Sloan worked on. It's very good. 
and it's very, very important. It's part of stop breaking things on the file systems by aggregating all these separate little mini CBF files into a bigger HDF file so you're not swamping your file system. A draft concordance between MXCBF and, and Nexus has been prepared. It is available. You can, you can get it on the web. An updated CBF dictionary has been prepared starting to incorporate some of the Nexus information into a, CB, into a CIF dictionary. Yeah? There's much work still to be done. Collaborators welcome. Any of you who would like to work for free, please join the fun. It's fun. It's fun. My wife thinks I have a strange idea of fun. Yeah? The way we're doing this is CBF remains CBF. HDF5 remains HDF5. Nexus remains Nexus. We're trying not to break anything. You keep being able to use the things you're used to using. Okay? But each gains in functionality from interoperable mappings. This is the critical thing. This is how we're integrating. Integration scares some people. Okay? We are interoperating. Okay? We're not, we're not breaking something, we're just doing synergies. Okay. New dictionaries and extensions to existing dictionaries will help in documenting the mappings. And here is a very important related term you're going to start hearing more and more about, DDLM. This is the dictionary definition language with methods. Okay. It's very important for providing clear documentation and portable implementations of the mappings. A mapping is a method of going from one thing to another. It's not just saying, this is another word for that. You actually have to perform some algorithmic conversions. Even in such a simple thing as going between the laboratory coordinate system as seen by CBF and the laboratory coordinate system as seen by Nexus. There's work to do. You don't want people getting it wrong. Define it clearly in the dictionary. DDLM lets us do that. Okay? Applications gained from the extension to the APIs, starting with CBF Live, but hopefully more people will do the same thing. Just trying to give them a good suggestion. HDF5 and Nexus gain CBF Live compressions. Why is that important? Because for these detectors, we need them. CBF users gain HDF5 compressions. Why is that important? Because we need those too. Turns out we need lots of different compressions to do different things. And to allow you to now go to sleep before I go in, in, in boring repetitious detail on more and more of this, here's where you find stuff. Okay? Uh, I, 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 this, this talk has been uploaded to you know, Brian's Dropbox website. I'm sure it'll end up someplace also you know, commonly available. Uh, so you, know, you can find this and you'll find these QRs, which will allow you to get to where the draft image of CBF version 1.7 dictionary okay, is available. Okay? A PDF summary of the concordance. It's not small, I apologize for that, but Brian made it much, look much nicer. He, he, he greatly improved the appearance and, and, and made it look more compact. But there's a lot of detail you have to deal with. And there's a CBF Live kit that you can get. Uh, yeah, it, it's got the stuff we have so far. There's another one coming after Jonathan comes to visit me uh, uh, on, on Long Island end of September, and we will then do a 09.3. Okay, yeah, there will be a new one available. Come on, machine. Uncooperative machine. Okay. Now, we're going, now yeah, you're allowed to go to sleep at this point. We're going to go into boring detail that tries to justify what I've been telling you. Okay. CCD X-ray detectors provide images at a moderate rate, one every few to several seconds. Current higher performance X-ray detectors, such as the Dectris Pilatus, are capable of doing six megapixel images. And a pixel is not a byte. On those, it's actually four bytes. Okay? At 10 to 25 frames per second, while the newest Pilatus 36M can operate at 100 frames per second. Okay? This is a lot of data coming at you. You're drinking data from a fire hose. Okay. The next generation, which is almost upon us, of high-performance X-ray detectors for MX, such as the Dectris Iger, will be capable of collecting 
more than 16 megapixel images at more than 125 frames per second. And if you don't believe me, you can go read the references on it when you pull down the talk from the website. The ADESC DM pad is also expected to produce 900 fine sliced images in steps of two tenths of a degree at 125 frames per second. The stuff is coming at you. Graham, Graham Winter helped pull together this, yeah, this, this nice chart of typical sustained data rates for detectors used for MX at NSLS, diamond light source, etc compared to the expected rates from the Iger. So you can look at where we are, say, with an ADSC Q315. Oh, reasonable sized image, 18 megabytes. Not bad, okay? Frame rate, 0.37 hertz. All right? Compressed rate, gigabytes per second. Okay? 0.13 gigabytes per second. That's nothing. Anyone can handle it. You can, you can handle that on, on, on a little laptop. Okay? So in terms of USB disks, if you consider a USB disk can swallow 25 megabytes per second, that's 200 megabits per second, 7%. Nothing. Okay? Everyone knows that's a very nice detector. Pilatus 2M, 24 megabyte images, a little bit bigger, not horrendously. Okay? Frame rate, 10 hertz. All right, it's a little scary. Oh, 0.48 gigabits per second. All right. 2.4 USB disks. Okay, so you, you know, USB disk is not going to quite do it. Get yourself a good, you know, disk connected with a better thing. Okay, you know, better, better interconnect. Come up a little bit to 25 frames a second goes up. Pilatus, let's look at the Pilatus 36M, okay? Same size image, you're going at 100 hertz. You are dealing with something which is 24 USB disk pipelines at a time. And when the Iger hits us, we're going to be dealing with 90. And the images are bigger with smaller pixels. This is very useful stuff. For MX alone at Diamond, they employ one Pilatus 2M, three Pilatus 6M FAST, and one Pilatus 3 6M, giving combined data rate of over one gigabyte per second, over 200 files per second. Current file systems are not designed to deal with this. They start breaking. Okay? These new detectors are creating the need to manage hundreds of thousands of images being received at rates from 60 megapixels to 2.5 gigapixels per second and beyond. It's the beginning of the problem, not the end. If we don't start thinking now, we won't deal with properly. Okay? For the advanced streamlines for, the, uh, uh, for NSLS 2 for biology, called EPIC, EPICS, okay? There are being built, okay? Okay, just for two of the beam lines, the, 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 the FMX and the AMX. Okay? We're going to produce an aggregate of more than 94 terabytes per operational half day. 660 terabytes per week. 38 petabytes per year. We're dealing with high fluxes. Okay? What does this mean? Very important subtle effect. The assumptions you make that we can start dealing with images that have almost no populated pixels and you can compress them easily, false. That is, we move to pumping in more photons, we're going to get more populated pixels, they're more difficult to compress. What are we trying to do for, for NSLS2? Here is a picture, I'll make it bigger. Oh, I will try and make it bigger. There we go. Okay. All right. So what we're going to have is the pixel array detector pumping out 9 gigabytes per second. We have to format and compress it, get it down to less than or equal to 2.25 gigabytes per second. In other words, 
we need, in order to not deal with horribly expensive hardware, we need at least a 4 to 1 compression. We'd rather have an 8 to 1 compression. Okay? We'll put a, a, a 100 terabyte store locally at, at a beam line. We'll log the OIs, MD5 checksums, or SHA-1, 2, or 3 checksums, etc. Stick those in the central repository. We're going to have to have something between 1 petabyte and 100 petabyte store. If you do any arithmetic, you'll notice that does not give us the ability to retain the data forever. Cannot be done. Okay? Got, yeah, we, uh, we, we have a big problem. Okay? And that's one beam line feeding that. Other beam lines are going to have to feed it. We got a problem, folks. Okay? In order to be manual, the raw 9 gigabyte per second data flow from each pad needs to be compressed, as I said, at least 4 to 1. Okay? Uh, we got trouble. Let me shrink this a little more. iPads are fun. We really have to do something to organize our data. What the physicists have discovered is that HDF5 and Nexus provide them with a tool to organize their data. We need it. We also have to have a lot more metadata. We've got to put our metadata with it. CBF, CIF, provides us with an essay organization of the associated metadata for subsequent processing. It also contributes, as I said, some useful compressions. In addition to the actual recording of the data, okay, at Diamond Light Source and elsewhere, there's been a push towards automatic analysis of the data as interactively processing the, the diffraction data. So think about it. You're going to bring this data in, and now, in order to avoid the problem of having to ship this data out, process it right there. But what does that mean? You're going to pick up and put down this massive data right on the same file systems that are trying to swallow this data. It's yet more file accesses. You have a serious problem. Right now, you know, Diamond's worrying about 1,000 file access operations per second. That's difficult. It's going to get worse. We're going to have more. Okay. HDF5 gives us a very good framework in, 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 in which to handle lots and lots of files and have them not appear to the file system as being separate files. Essentially a file system within a file system. Helps to solve the problem. Okay. Next, this is a tree-oriented view of HDF5. Gives a very convenient front end to HDF5. It's actually a thin layer of software. You do not pay a significant penalty for using Nexus. Good idea to use Nexus. Okay. Helps. Okay. It's well suited for the management of large volumes of data. It's getting used. And a lot of other systems for managing data, such as NetCDF, actually use Nexus, so actually use HDF5 internally. Okay. While HDF5 is tree-oriented, there's a problem. To manage the facility, you also need databases. Databases need tables, not trees. Okay. That's a tree. These are tables. You can go between them. You need to go between them. You need the trees for some views of the data. You need the tables to deal with things in a database environment. You need to move back and forth. You need to deal with very complex metadata, for example. Here from Diamond is a Pilatus style you know, modules being put in a very funny geometry. You've got to keep track of that geometry. You need the metadata. SIF is very friendly to that. SIF is friendly to databases. Okay. Skip forward. I've told you enough about tables. We're going to have to extend the ontology, but 
a database, DOIs, checksums. They're important elements of dealing with the issue of fraud and crystallography. John Helliwell mentioned it. It's real. You have to do something to protect against it. Then it'll happen less. When people know people are watching, they do fewer wrong things. Okay. Let's move on to compression. A long-standing issue in, 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 in crystallography, high speed, high compression, edge compression is a critical issue for the next generation of detectors. Some compressions raise license issues. You have to be careful which ones you use. Some popular compressions are slower and efficient, or both. Some compressions can be handled in processing programs such as XDS if you handle the license issues and language issues. Okay. Low pixel density, fine slicing with clean backgrounds makes some compressions more effective. So for example, for the Iger, if you have the right data, some simple available compression, such as LZ4, will give you a 60 to 1 compression. Unfortunately, if you take exactly the same compression, same code, and feed it more realistic MX data from things that are sliced that something that makes sense with mosaicity, it drops to maybe 5 or 6 to 1. So we have added the CBF Live compressions. Plugins have been written to allow HDF5 to read and write CBF Live compressions. And this has given us very interesting results. BZIP2 is a compression, you know, lots of you use without thinking about it, compression ratio for the, the, this very reasonable data of 20.4 to 1. Okay? Little slow, not awful. If I take what's called the canonical compression from CBF Live, 15.7 to 1, bit faster. Take one called nibble offset, I get 11.5 to 1 and about the speed, uh, yeah, 3. It's, it's almost twice as fast. The others are in there. The CBF Live byte offset compression, which we use for the Pilatus, as, as that's the one you normally get, is only a 4 to 1 compression and, you know, very, very fast. It's just enough to work for the Iger, but the nibble offset would be a better choice. These are useful. Okay. We had a workshop in January. This is the Dector Seiger workshop. We had this wonderful meeting, and we followed up with a, a, a meeting here just before. And the important point here is this right here. Okay. Discussions with NIAC and Comsys took place prior to this meeting with agreement by Comsys to pursue interoperability starting with APX. Oh, should I have said MX or PX? Anyway, Nexus application definition and a telco meeting in three months. We are moving forward. Okay. This is very likely to happen in some form. I told you about mini CBF to Nexus being useful. You don't need to know the details on that. The main thing I should do to let you go and have your tea, or uh, lunch I guess, uh, is I should tell you acknowledgments. So, we have the BNL PXRR group, Diamond Light Source. I haven't listed the people who are listed as authors. So, you know, this is not, I'm not trying to leave them out. We have my group. Uh, Dectris has done wonderful things. There's a group called BioHDF, the HDF group. My wife is absolutely critical to this. And funders, one must always credit funders. Uh, work funded in part by NIGM, SDOA, NSF, and Pandata. Thank you. <laughs>